I still hate your paper, said Dr. No. As graduate students, postdocs, and professors, we all meet Dr. No, N-O. At some point during the peer review process, when we submit a paper to a journal. Dr. No is that reviewer who tells you that your paper is terrible, but offers no real suggestions at all, so there's nothing for you to address to improve your paper. Dr. No is that reviewer who uses five full single-spaced pages for 30 to 50 comments. Dr. No is that reviewer who tells you to generate new knockout mice that cures cancer in order for you to publish your paper. Never mind that that'll take 25 years. Dr. No is that reviewer who tells you that they are annoyed they had to waste their time reviewing a paper as bad as this one. Having met several Dr. No's in my young scientific career, I just suddenly noticed and realized that there are exactly 10 different classes of reviewers lurking on the scientific battlefield. The first class of reviewer is who I like to call the soldier. The soldier is not an expert in your area, but has the basic fitness and training to understand it. The soldier will steadily march into your paper and shoot an honest and mostly on-target review. But because the soldier is not an expert in your area, they don't have much passion. They will neither reject nor accept your paper. The soldier gets the job done and falls in line with the experts. Most reviewers are soldiers. The next class of reviewer is who I like to call the paratrooper. The paratrooper will appear out of nowhere, riddling your paper with a sustained aerial assault of criticism that has nothing to do with the main idea. Completely ungrounded, the paratrooper's comments are impossible to address because they make no sense. The trademark reaction to reading these so uplifting reviews from the paratrooper is, whoa, whoa, where did that come from? The weapons specialist. The weapons specialist is the expert in your area, constantly digging new trenches in the front lines of the field. They will either champion your paper or eviscerate it. Whatever they unleash will be intense, focused, and ballistic, leaving you completely shell-shocked. The sniper. The sniper will parse your paper with deadly accuracy until the first perceived mistake. Headshot. Reject. Next. The medic. The medic really, really, really wanted to treat, cure, and save your paper. But that ended up killing the patient. The medic will insert a carefully and precisely placed incision to the heart of your paper as your paper bleeds out equations, figures, and data onto the floor. No amount of second opinion, no amount of referrals to specialists can bring life back to your fallen paper. The chaplain. The chaplain tends to the wounded, dying, and dead papers by providing spiritual, emotional, and moral counsel. Despite the sins committed by your paper, the chaplain offers some sort of sanctuary. They'll whisper to you, thou shall cite key missing references, and with that, thou paper shall rise up from the dead and be resurrected into an alternative journal, but not this one. Your paper is barely passable in that other journal, but this journal, get out. Now talk about a spiritual experience on the battlefield. Holy smokes. The engineer. The engineer loves experimentation. In fact, an engineer has never made a paper that couldn't use more firepower. A subset of these engineers are missing a screw and will throw a wrench into the minor technical nuts and bolts of your paper. The foot scout. The foot scout delivers a flawless summary of your abstract. The foot scout does not read your paper and makes this obvious by telling you to do exactly what you did in your paper. 
foot scouts are usually reluctant fifth-year graduate students drafted into the campaign. The spy. The spy was working on the exact same problem as you. And remarkably, the spy had the exact same idea for a solution. My fellow scientists and engineers, worry not. Your ideas will be published, just without your name on it. And finally, we come to the 10th and final class of reviewer, who I like to call the detonator. Right from the title, the detonator knew your paper had to be rejected. If the length of the review must overkill the length of your manuscript, so be it. Your paper is simply too dangerous to publish. It must and will be stopped. No reviewer is as interactive, hyperactive, time to time as radioactive. Your topic is out of scope. Your writing is terrible. Your solution is neither surprising nor interesting. Your problem is not worth solving. Your idea sucks. I hate your paper. Your theories are broken. Your solution doesn't work. Your experiments are hopelessly flawed. And besides, you're duplicating the classic results of Doe and Smith, 1947. There's more, but it starts to get mean. My fellow scientists and engineers, feeling gloomy about your latest reviews? Those brick walls are there for a reason. It's time to lick your wounds and try again. And again. With some luck, we'll all meet a Dr. Yes someday. Thank you.